all these busy stuff, and we're thankful for it. We need, we're, we're created to do stuff, and we praise you for that. But God, now we ask, Lord, that we just settle down. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit soothe us, Lord, with your presence. And God, we ask that we worship you. Lord, nothing is more important. All the activities, all the other things, nothing is more important than us acknowledging, worshiping you, Lord, that what you are worth and what, how little we are worth, and we bring that to you in worship. We ask you, Lord, that every heart be moved to worship, every mouth and every lips, Lord, be moved, Lord, to bring you praise this morning as our simple prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Welcome to Palm Sunday. Jesus, this begins Holy Week. And it begins with Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, okay? You're going to be challenged today to follow Jesus in his steps. So let's stand and let's sing together.
You know, we look back at Palm Sunday through an empty tomb. You know that, don't you? As as all of uh, as all of the week that that uh, transpired for Jesus, you know, he had his eyes on the cross the whole time, the whole time. So as he was coming into Jerusalem, you know, you think about it. As he was as he was coming into Jerusalem, the crowds were gathered around him, and uh, and they they you know they were ready to crown him. You know, they were. They were looking at that, but Jesus had his eyes on the cross because there was something more important, and that was the fact of our salvation. And that's why there's the cross. Sorry about that. There's nothing worse than an out of tune guitar. An out of tune banjo, <laughs> maybe. Help me, help me here. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the King. It's a real simple song. Around majestic throne, sing redemption. Let the church, let the church rise up and sing. Bless her holy king. Bless her holy king. Let's put your hands together. Come on. Come on. Let's just sing it out to the Jesus today. Like he's riding through here, okay? Come on. Let the church rise up and sing. And bless the risen King. Let new creation, let new creations and thumbs ring. Let the church rise up and sing. And bless the Holy King. Sing out hallelujah. Hallelujah. majestic throne crown majestic throne sing redemption song let the church rise up let the church rise up and sing and bless her holy king Courage strong in his steadfast word. Let the church with lifted hand share his word upon the land. We'll sing along the way. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the King. Round the jail.
majestic throne sing redemption song the angels will watch us yeah Think about this. Think about it now. Without a blot or stain, made righteous through Christ's holy blood, let the church in white hooray. Get prepared. Prepare for wedding day. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? <laughs> yeah. You're going to stand before him one day. You know, all the things you struggle with down here, man, they're going to, you're not even going to think about them. You're just going to have your eyes on Jesus. Like, right? Can you say amen to that? Isn't that cool to think about? That you're going to have your eyes totally and completely and focused on Jesus. You know, it takes us a while sometimes to even get our mind in a framework to worship the living King. But there won't be any distractions there, friend. None at all. None at all. And by the way, if, if God were to open up the heavens and we could see it, you know what you would see? You would see angels. Everything that He's created in the heavens. And they would be they would they would be saying as John saw holy holy holy, Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, meaning that He's the eternal one. And you know you th you think about you think about the reality of heaven is the power of all of His holiness. You, you couldn't you couldn't stand it to if He unveiled all of His glory right now physically. Neither you or I. But there, we'll have bodies fashioned like His. And we'll see Him as we is. Are you looking for Him? I am. I'm looking for Jesus. Holy, 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 Lord God.
We, bow, we fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. We fall down, we lay our crown at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of His mercy and love at the feet. Cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. Is the Going back to we bow down, Mike.
praise Him now and forevermore. You can be seated. You can be seated. God bless you. Um, our children may be dismissed to Children's Church at this time. I, I want to share a scripture with you. It's found in the Gospel of John. And Mike, put this scripture up. This is in light of the triumphal entry, and this is John's accounting of it. I want you to see what he said. You see, all the time that this last week of human history, of human history from Jesus' standpoint. Uh, Jesus was telling his disciples all along the way that he would go to the cross. And matter, matter of fact, there was one time after Peter had had this, Peter, James, and John had, had this wonderful vision of the transfiguration of Jesus. After Peter's grand confession that he was the Lord. After that, after that grand confession, Jesus revealed that he would go to the cross. And Peter's like, no, you cannot. No. And this guy that gave this grand, grand confession, Jesus turns around to him and looks at him and says, get behind me, Satan. Now, that's something, isn't it? When you think about it, I'm thinking, that's a lot like me sometimes. I'm thinking, like, yeah, I'm here, and yeah, I'm there sometimes. Jesus knew. He knew the plan of God and the will of God would involve a cross. And as they were gathering on Palm Sunday, entering Jerusalem, there was probably about 2 million people. Get your mind around this. There was probably about 2 million people there from everywhere. And they were gathered and going to the city. Many of them were looking for a leader. They were looking for a king. They felt the harshness of Rome. And they were looking for a natural king. Physical king. Somebody that would reign in and be the Messiah. They had no clue that it would involve a cross. Because they didn't have any clue of the depth of the need of the human heart. So Jesus rides in to Jerusalem. And the last week of Holy Week is, it was a, is, is just a roller coaster of emotions when you look at it. Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. And all of this is symbolism. Symbolism here is that Jesus didn't ride in as a conquering king. He, he rode in more like the humble king. It wasn't like on a white stallion. It wasn't like, here I come. It was, no, I'm coming in in humility. And he came in fulfillment of the scripture. Zechariah tells us that. Jesus, Jesus comes in and, and the crowds were ecstatic. They were waving palm branches and they were declaring, they were saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who came, comes in the name of the Lord. They were expecting that Jesus would be not a crucified king. They thought he would be the king that would set things straight and right. They had one expectation of Jesus, and Jesus had one expectation, and that was the will of his heavenly Father. That's saying something. 
There's a lot of expectations around us, and you feel them every day. You feel the expectations. But Jesus had one primary central focus, and that, w- that He would fulfill the purpose and the will of God, even if it was difficult. And He did. He did. I find these words striking. If anyone serves me, think of that. Jesus is talking, and he's talking about a grain that's going to fall to the ground. He's talking about his death and resurrection in in the context of these passages. He says, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. Now, there's a lot of folks that were serving religion. Serving their church, they were serving their synagogue, they were serving in all kinds of ways. But notice what he says. He says, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. This, this, was, <laughs> this was difficult because the disciples would begin to experience through this week the most difficult place on Friday. You see, the waving of the palm branches is a wonderful thing. I mean, it was exciting. Look at the crowd. Listen to the response. And yet Jesus knew that in the purview of the scope of God's plan for his life to provide for redemption, there would be a cross. And it would be in Jerusalem. He knew it. They didn't. They knew it too. I think deep down, the disciples knew it, but they surely did not want it, and did not welcome it. And who would? Who would? Matter of fact, there's. If you think of their life, as they are following Jesus, his disciples, and this great crowd on Palm Sunday. I couldn't have helped but imagine that their minds went back to when Jesus called them. You know, he called Peter and Andrew from their fishing boats. And they said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. But they also said, Jesus also said to them, take up your cross and follow me. That's an odd saying. And you think about it, that's just an odd phrase. I mean, take up your cross and you follow me, Jesus told his disciples. Well, they knew what the cross meant. They knew it would be there they knew that there would be there would be rejection and they knew that they they knew all the nuances of the words, I'm sure. Jesus said, Take up a cross and follow me. You see, Jesus has never promised us an easy way. Never has. And in spite of what you hear on TV and other places, He has never promised us an easy way. He didn't tell us that our, our world would be, or our lives would be filled with, uh, would not have pain and suffering and sorrows and doubts and disappointments and misunderstandings and rejections and all kinds of things. He didn't say that it would. But He did say He would be with us. Are you following Him? Are you following Jesus? Think about Monday. Jesus had walked up, you know, Jerusalem's kind of on this this hillside. And Jesus had come through Bethany, up the mountain, through the Kendron Valley, up to Jerusalem. And it was a long journey. By the way, the week prior to that, he had just raised Lazarus from the dead. And some folks didn't like that. Now... I don't know how you cannot like somebody being raised from the dead, but they didn't. And uh, it, it was a threat. It was a threat to the religious system. And so Jesus rides in Jerusalem with his great victory in that, in that regard, spiritual victory. Monday he, he goes and he basically looks into the temple. And I'm sure he just shakes his head. Because it was on Tuesday, Jesus did an unthinkable thing in the minds of many of the Jewish leaders. He cleansed the temple. 
he looked at it and he said, you, you have, you've made my house a den of thieves. It was a righteous indignation that Jesus had. He was not out of control. It was a righteous indignation. And Jesus said, you, you've made my father's house. I mean, look, the, Gentile, the Gentiles who need, need, need to be, you've placed them even farther away and, and, and uh, you've, you've made this thing as a, you've made, a, made it a thing of making money. He said, it, it's just it's all it's about. It's, it's the buying and selling of the sacrificial animals and so forth. And you've made, it a, you've made it a real spectacle. My house is to be a house of prayer, he said. He cleanses the temple. Now, that, that didn't obviously fare too well. Wednesday was silent. There's nothing on Wednesday. Jesus probably went back either to Jerusalem, or not, I'm sorry, to Bethany and stayed with Martha and Mary because it was just a little over the hill. So his disciples would follow after him. And then the night prior, he probably stayed like Thursday. He probably, was, uh, he probably stayed in, in the Garden of Gethsemane or somewhere around there. There were places that people could sleep. Beautiful garden groves of olives. You could, you could, smell, the, you could smell the aroma of uh, olive oil from the olive presses. Been a nice aromatic place. Jesus was was there, and he 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 stayed there. And then Thursday, he prepared his disciples. Had an upper room. Had a room that prepared, and he reclined with his disciples. And meaning that when they didn't, they didn't sit around a table like we're sitting. They reclined. They would recline on their elbow and, and they would partake of a meal together. And they were all together and they were sharing. It was a very intimate time. And Jesus reveals a lot there. He, he basically says, one of you is going to betray me. Well, he knew it. He knew it all along. It was Judas. Judas is already making the transactions to sell him. Gain access to Jesus. But You know, all this looks like the connivings of men, but it's not. It's by the will of God. Because God's providential. And so, so that evening they, they shared together a Seder meal. Passover, supper. Jesus takes bread, bread of life, and he breaks it. What does he say? He said, this is my body. Take ye. And then he takes the fruit of the vine. All of these have been crushed and broken. You think about it. All the elements have been crushed and broken. Grapes, crushed to make to make the fruit of the vine the bread crushed broken from the heart of the earth bread was made broken goes back to what Isaiah said he was wounded and bruised for our transgression by his wounds and by his stripes we are healed. The greatest spiritual healing in our life happens not through turning over a new leaf, but through the through the blood of Christ. It's through his through his wounds. We've been healed. He he made peace for us so we can know his heavenly Father. That's why. He, he made peace for us so that we could know His heavenly Father. The wrath of God was poured out upon God the Son. And in turn, they poured out their love 
upon a broken world. So that we could know who created us in His image. Friday. Well, that evening it was... It was uh, <laughs> that Thursday evening was after they, had, they sang a hymn. They left. They'd taken the Lord's Supper. They washed each other's feet like Jesus washed their feet. Like a servant. That says, that says that there's, there's so much in, in that one action that Jesus served. Humility. He would go to the garden. They were going to retire for the night. And by that time, Judas had done his deed. They were coming with torches and lights. and They were looking for him. They found him. And Jesus didn't put up, he didn't put up a fight. There, there was no fight. Matter of fact, Simon Peter, who's always impulsive, I mean, he draws his sword. And <laughs> matter of fact, you think of it. He draws his sword and he's, he's going to decapitate this Roman soldier. He's going to bring that sword down on top of his, of his helmet. And he misses Cuts the guy's ear off. Jesus heals the guy in the garden. That's our Savior. There's no fight. There, there was, there's, there's nothing. There's no conflict in that regard. Jesus again rebuked Peter, as he had done a few times. Mock trials. And Jesus, by that morning time after mock trials, and he would be hanging on a cross. The whole time. Oh, by the way, he prayed in the garden. I forgot that, didn't I? He struggled. Jesus prayed in the garden. He struggled. He's like, God, can there be, Father, my Father, can there be any other way? Can there be any other way? He, he was so intense, emotionally anxious. So emotionally anxious that his sweat becomes as great drops of blood. And that can literally happen according to physicians. He resolved that the will of the Father would be done. So there's mock trial, there's this arrest, a mock trial. He's on the cross on... Friday morning. Good Friday, we call it. Good Friday. Roman execution was horrible. Horrible. Shameful. Horrible. And there on six hours on, on that cross, and by three o'clock that afternoon, the, the skies just turned dark. By the way, it would have been around that time that the priests would have been offering their, 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 their sacrifice. The blood would have been flowing down in the Kedron Valley from all the slaughtered lambs. And the Lamb of God On a cursed tree. Was doing something for humanity. For me. That we couldn't do for ourselves. He did something that no religion can do. He provided a way back to the Father. God had created us. Jesus forgives two thieves on a cross, promises them that they'll be in paradise. 
he says, Father, forgive them. They're not, they don't really know what they're doing. Nothing but love was poured out upon Jesus. And then he hangs his head and he dies and he says, but he says this first, he says, it is finished. Well, what's finished? That's an odd kind of word for somebody to exclaim from a cross. It's, it's finished with what's finished, the plan of salvation. Right here. We have been justified by and made right with God through His blood. So what He did. They took Him down. He was buried in a tomb. A borrowed tomb. He wouldn't need it for long. Obviously. Right? He wouldn't. Man, Friday looked so bleak. I couldn't have, The disciples were so heartbroken and discouraged. They couldn't. Listen. If you ever feel like that you failed in the Christian life, or if you've like, I, I could do a lot better, I could be a lot better, you know, we all can. Here's the disciples that they were like, you know, the, the moment that my friend Jesus needed me, I couldn't follow him. They ran, with the exception of John and a few women. They They ran. I mean, think about that. I mean, they were close friends. They had been, they had followed Jesus for three and a half, three years, three and a half years, and they they were they had followed him as friends. They knew him. They were they were kind of like buddies. And when Jesus needed them the most, they were sleeping in the garden. And they they found the cross too difficult to bear. I get it, don't you? I'm not. Here to point a finger at how bad the disciples were. No. I'm thinking, Lord, I have a difficult time sometimes following you when it's difficult. And I think Jesus says, you know what? I get it. That's why I took the cross for you. I don't feel worthy to, I don't feel worthy to take communion, Lord. I, I, you know, I just don't feel worthy. Well, it's not about your feelings of worthiness. It's about the goodness of God and who He is. What He says about you. The power of grace that brings salvation. See, He's going to make us perfect one day. He is going to make us perfect. But now... We look to him and we, we transpose our, our, or we transfix our eyes upon Jesus. And you say, well, how do we do that? How, how do we transfix our eyes on Jesus? I can't see him. If I could see him, then I could, I, I, I know if he would just come here and sit and talk to me and, and tell me that everything's going to be all right and, and I'm, I'm, that, 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 that this plan's going to work out, then I would be fine. But he doesn't do that. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. And that's why we live by faith and not by sight. That's why we live by faith and not by sight. By His wounds we are healed. Why the sacrifice? Well, you know, we look at Passion Week and, and we think, well, the, the, cro the cross. But think about this. If, if Passion Week ended on Good Friday and Jesus would simply have died a martyr, and we could say that the Jesus religion is just like every other religion in the world. He was a good teacher. He was a good man, the best man who ever lived. And, um, but he would have died a martyr. And what you get is that Jesus didn't die a martyr. That's not even a clue in the gospel accounts that he died a martyr. He didn't. He he was in control the whole time in the will of the Father. And God was doing something that the demons of hell shuddered and didn't even understand, and they couldn't. But Jesus died on the cross. And His death, burial, and resurrection. So when we look at the cross, we look at it, 
as ones who have followed Jesus to the empty tomb like the disciples. And we look back. And we say, oh, the cross. Oh, yeah, I get it. Jesus was here, and He's not here now. And Jesus was there, and He died. He tasted death for all men. And so I get it. There's, there's life after death. And the grave doesn't end it. And it doesn't. It doesn't. No, it doesn't end it. You're made to live forever. You are made to live forever. Get that in your mind. You're li- you, you are made to live forever. Let it sink in. You are made to live forever. And God gives us the steps of somebody in history that lived after the fact of death. After a cross. After a horrible week of misunderstanding. After a horrible week of rejection. After, you see, they didn't get the depth of their need. And neither do I sometimes. But the depth of the need, my friend, is that we need a Savior. Somebody who forgives us of our sins. And somebody who loves us in such a way that would come down here for us and draw us by by His Spirit unto Himself that we can have faith and know Him. I want to go to the Apostles' Creed. Mike, this is... You may have to scroll down like three or four slides. I'm not going to do my song, but I, I want I want to go. Yeah, just go on past that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I want us to look at. Keep on going. Yeah, keep on going. One more. The Apostles' Creed, and then we'll go back and do communion. Come on up here, Russ. Russ is going to lead us in a, in a communion meditation hymn. But I want you to think about what the apostles believed. And the Apostles' Creed is one of the earliest, earliest, early church documents of what they actually believed about Jesus and about the church. Come on, come on up here. Yeah, come on. Yeah. What they believed about the church. What they believed about what Jesus did. And it is a powerful reminder a powerful reminder that your faith, friend, is not, is not based on totally and completely your feelings of your, or your experience, but, but that there is actually historical grounding in the Scripture and in history on the, the faith that you say that you have. And you come in a line of a long line of people who said, yes, I have trusted Jesus, His death, His burial, His resurrection and Him as my Savior and Lord, and I am following Him. I am following in His steps. I'm following Him. Yeah, I'm serving Him, but I'm also following Him. You need to be more, you and I need to be more settled, not on just serving Jesus, but following Him. Following Him says, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm okay when you interrupt my schedule. Following him says, okay, Lord, I didn't expect this hiccup. Following him, but I'll follow you. Following him means that the Holy Spirit lays sometimes people on your heart that needs to know the message and sharing it. Following him. You can't program that. You you don't program that. It's, 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 It's looking to Jesus and saying, Lord, I'm... Keeping my eyes on you by faith in your word to live for you and help me to serve you. Help me to serve you. So I want us to, I want us to say together, corporately, together, the Apostles' Creed. Let's do it together. Let's repeat it together. Let's say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His holy Son, our Lord, who was conceived 
by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. That's what you believe. That's what you believe. Russ is going to lead us in a song called um, By His Wounds. And there's no, wor no words for you to sing along. But I want us to begin to think about Jesus. And as we prepare our hearts to, um, to receive the Lord's table, we'll have an opportunity to, to share together. And um, if you want to pray at the altar, you can. This altar is open. And the, the bread and the cup are in three stations, here, here, and here. And when we get to the, to, the, to the song, What Can Wash Away My Sins? You can come. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all symbols, all it is. It's just a symbol of the death of the covenant of Christ that was made through His cross. And it's a symbol of Jesus and His death. His coming in the flesh and the blood that He would shed on the cross. He was pierced for our transgressions He was crushed for our sins the punishment that brought us peace was upon Him. And by His wounds, by His wounds we are healed. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds by his wounds we are healed we are healed by the sacrifice in the life that you gave we are healed for you paid the price by your grace we are saved we are saved he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our sins the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. By his wounds, by his wounds, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Us. What can make me whole again? 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, faithful is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. For my pardon, this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Sing, oh, precious. Oh. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Almighty God, we come to you, Lord. We thank you for your many blessings, God. We thank you for what this communion represents. It, unrepresent, it represents how unworthy we are, but through your blood and your, your, your will, God, that we have a way to know you more. Yeah. God, we thank you for all you do for us, and most of all, we, we thank you for your precious son and the sacrifice he gave. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take the bread first. and. Jesus, and I want you to take the bread, and if you can, if you haven't already taken it, just break it. Listen to it break. You hear that? He was broken for what breaks us. Sin. He was broken. Let us eat in remembrance. He also took a cup. And he blessed it. And it would be a reminder of his blood that was shed for our sins. Let us drink in remembrance the Lord's shed blood. Let's bow for prayer. Praise man's going to come back. You can be seated. Let's pray together. Father, what a wonderful privilege to be in your house today, this Palm Sunday. What a wonderful reminder that by your wounds we are healed. I pray that we would be your people. We are called special, a special treasure before you. 
because of what you've done for us. You've made us your own. And you're making us your own, Lord. To present us faultless before you. We are thankful for the cross and we are thankful for the Passion Week. And I pray that um, pray that this week would be every step of the way of this week we would think of you. Let us think of you every single day of how you stepped and where you stepped. Lord, we're just reminded over and over how we need you for each and every day. So we know that you promised us that you would go with us. We're going to look to you. In Jesus' name. Sam, let's sing it together.
There is a Redeemer, Jesus God's own Son, precious Lamb of God Messiah, Holy One, Jesus my God Messiah, oh poor sinner slain. Let's sing the chorus. Thank you. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit to the sing it. Thank you. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit to the work on earth is done. And leaving, and 